My name is Ekin. Welcome to my presentation. Today I will be discussing some similarities on how some of the articles in our Visualizing Peace Library study and conceptualize peace. The articles are taken from the fields of peace studies, media studies, and pedagogical studies. So I'll start by briefly summarizing the articles that I've chosen. The first is this article by Roger McGinty, Everyday Peace, Bottom-Up, and Local Agency in Conflict-Affected Societies. The article defines everyday peace as the ways in which individuals in, conf in societies affected by uh, division and conflict interact with one another to reduce conflict both within um, their groups and between different groups. It goes on to define uh, social interactions that form part of everyday peace and investigate the potential for everyday peace to foster peace outside of formally established um, peace building practices. The second is this article by Olu Jensen et al, music, protest, music videos as protest communication, the Gezi Park protest on YouTube. This piece focuses on the use of aesthetic qualities of uh, the music videos disseminated through YouTube to build so solidarity among protesters and resist a uh, dominant discourse that was um, created during uh, the Gezi Park protests by the government. The final piece I have is an article by Mary Amanda Stewart, My Journey of Hope and Peace, Learning from Adolescent Refugees Lived Experiences. In this article, Stewart reflects on how centering educational activities around her refugee students' experience during a summer English language literacy program informed her teaching and stretched her understanding of refugee experiences. So the main similarity I see between habits of studying and visualizing peace in these three articles is an emphasis on agency. I mean agency in the sociological sense, meaning the ability of individuals to act independently and in a way that expresses their self-determination. Agency in the Gizzy Park article refers to music videos allowing the protesters to present a narrative of the protests as fun, um, as a social activity to take part in rather than something to be feared, um, resisting the repressive terms that the Turkish government was using to characterize the protesters and uh, define the protests according to themselves. Agency in the pedagogical context of Stewart's article um, refers to allowing the students to write their own life stories in the classroom and present them under their own terms. For example, one of Stewart's students chooses to represent her migration story as a story of hope and peace, um, even though Stewart doesn't necessarily see it as such. The Everyday Peace article stresses that everyday peace is closely linked to how willing groups are to resist mechanisms of division that the state um, power may enforce between groups. Agency and the decisions that groups make in these moments in which they are confronted with one another is a key area of investigation for everyday peace. So agency is closely linked with how dominant narratives are reframed and shifted to advocate for peace um, instead of conflict or fear um, across the articles. The common points I see between the Everyday Peace article and, this, and Stewart's article in Studying Peace is an emphasis on everyday human interaction, as well as um, avoiding tendencies to homogenize groups and um, experiences is a concept that underpins both articles' understanding of peace. In Everyday Peace, McGinty stresses the role of mundane interactions that form a part of Everyday Peace in deconstructing uh, walls between groups, um, allowing members of groups to gain a more multifaceted and complex understanding of one another. In Stewart's article, the onus is on educators to resist the assumption that all uh, refugee students have the same lived experience to combat prejudice, um, and discrimination that uh, refugee students may face by integrating uh, refugee narratives into the classroom, uh, be it through uh, literature or other forms of media. Peace in Stewart's article in McGinty's is visualized as achieved through interaction, communication, breaking prejudices and increasing tolerance through daily interactions. 
Stewart's article and the music video's article treat looking to the past as a way to visualize a more peaceful um, future. The past and lived experiences of the students in the Stewart article proved to be a powerful tool to increase engagement with um, the learning content, but also in developing their language skills, which will hopefully result in better integration of the students into their new societies. In the music videos article, the past is looking to the future refers to the way in which people producing um, protest music videos would take lyrics of well-known old songs and adapt them to some into something new to fit the Gizzy Park context. And um, producing music videos from this content allows them to create more relevant content and gain um, wider public attention um, to create more protest action as a way towards peace. Looking to the past and uh, shaping it to visualize the future, whether it is integrating in an English speaking society by telling the story of your past or adapting well-known cultural points of reference to, pit, to fit protest themes is seen as a way towards peace. Finally, both the Everyday Peace article and the Gizzy Park article um, are interested in peace as moving outside the context of a formal environment and into one that is, um, to quote McGinty directly, empathetic and social. One music video featured in the Gizzy Park article depicts an environment in which singing evokes the unique Gizzy Park protester identity, uniting people that were participating in the protest, but who also shared opposing um, identities outside of the context of the protest. The protesters are also moving outside of traditional media bro broadcasting um, towards the digital YouTube realm precisely because it is unregulated by the government institutions. By, YouTube, by using YouTube as a platform to share the message of their protest, they are hoping for peace through social justice. As Everyday Peace is um, concerned with peace outside organized and institutional peace building practice, um, achieving peace is envisioned as a social endeavor occurring between and within these groups. As these interactions are highly context specific and fluid, everyday peace is a reminder that conflict does not permeate into all contexts of society and uh, demonstrates the potential to challenge um, dominant narratives of peace building. Thank you for listening. That's the end of my presentation. I hope this has proved useful in seeing how peace in different areas of study can actually share many common points and similarities uh, despite seeing completely unrelated.